like Simon, I'd want to think about that one a little longer and, and prepare a more polished answer. But uh, I think putting shavers ahead of self, bringing along others, setting a good example. On, on that point, I think just to say that what I will do is prepare a rough draft with the answers as you've given, and you can then, of course, amend or redact accordingly to polish them up too. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to emphasize. I, I never said it, so I don't need to keep saying things twice. But I think I'd like to emphasize the um, the streamlining of the opportunity, finding that you know, allowing people to, as it were, bringing the, the animals to the water. I certainly can't say that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, giving people access to the opportunity. Uh, I also stand for a, a, an absence of red tape. So you know, I'm sort of libertarian in this regard. I want people to. Uh, not Jackson, Jackson reforms in plus plus. Whereby there's a hell of a lot of potential red tape, um, far more so than um, when I started. Um, no, notwithstanding the Jackson reforms and Liz Gloucester's. Oh yeah, yeah, but I mean, just no, but red tape about things like, for example, we've got GDPR, all the data yeah. protection, R- regulatory happens. compliance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Regulatory, but also um, as you've got things like mobile phones. I know it sounds uh, you know, hilarious, but I remember you know when mobile phones were coming in and computers and emails and things like this, you know, the whole of that world brings with it um, all sorts of potential issues and, um, uh, and the accidental disclosure of, you know, that life can become much more um, rule-bound. And how, how does that uh, I would like to okay. stand for, you know, not increasing uh, unnecessarily the, the rule-bound nature of it. How does that manifest itself uh, in terms of your role as co-head of Chambers? You've got to be careful what you put in an email. You've got to be be, be tolerant, be tolerant about, you know, you're dealing with human beings at the end of the day. And so, you know, effectively allowing them to shine. I mean, not trying to use up huge amounts of their time, or ours, by the way, uh, in what is not the day job. So we're here to try and basically clear the weeds from the uh, from the undergrowth so that the flowers can shine through. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, One point... In in that sense, Dominic, uh, being at the bars is not altogether different from what I experienced um, uh, in law firm practice. I think in both cases it's been clear to me that uh, the individual uh, barristers and lawyers uh, cherish their independence. It's a big um, big driver in, in uh, uh, their uh, scheme of things and I think the bar has done a uh, a reasonably good job of preserving that sense of independence. We're all technically self-employed. Um, I hear anecdotally uh, that it's become more of a struggle, certainly in big law practice, uh, for law firms to protect in the independence of the individual lawyers uh, as much maybe as it, 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 it once was. If I can go back to an earlier point which I alluded to but didn't develop, which is the relationship with external law firms, clearly uh, the interface is with the clerks uh, and the advisory capacity with each of the relevant barristers. But what can you do as co-heads to enhance, develop and facilitate those uh, relationships in, insofar as you can? You go first, Jeff. Well, it, it, again, uh, this is a a moment of tremendous international opportunity. Um, the Clarks uh, are excited about expanding their horizons and being brought into that more than maybe in the past they, they had been. But, you know, there's a role uh, for us to play to ensure that um, those opportunities are realized rather than than, than lost. And, and uh, you know, that's about getting on airplanes as much as it is about... Um, doing things uh, in, in the neighbouring pub. Um. <laughs> Simon? No, I, I, I agree with that. I don't think I've had anything to add to it. Um, the questions I've put to you are journalistic in the sense that the sort of questions I would put uh, to any barrister or solicitor when interviewing them, trying to extract good and, and meaningful answers rather than the standard wording of one likes, which can might sound fine, but reads very is very dull copy on the page. Um, are there particular issues that you would like to address in the piece that I haven't covered or touched upon? I think just to emphasise sort of good news. This is more texture than sort of content. Um, you know, emphasise the. Uh, uh,